can we make a prayer that will shake the heavens whereby the lord makes an immediate covenant with you remember sacrificial prayers is so powerful when you stretch your hands and you pray there are people who do that there are ladies who do that i have seen so many people who have this great gift of intercession remember i just want to inspire just one thing all these prayers are noticed by jesus and these prayers have powerful effect do we have such powerful prayers and sacrifices in our life to do so that god will make a covenant with us do you have a habit of praying repeatedly so that god will make a covenant i do remember somebody advised us to pray the psalms this is psalm 150 psalms exposing the blessed sacrament and reading the psalms so one day we we started to pray in this way in the night so we exposed the blessed sacrament and we started to uh, uh, read the psalms together in a very loud voice psalm 1 until psalm 150 after uh, 50 psalms we took a short break then another 50 psalms then another 50 psalms like three but continuously without breaking few people will go take break and the others wait then we continued 150 psalms we prayed the whole psalms reading loud and this is the same prayer that jesus has done we should know psalms are all about christ and after we have prayed 150 psalms before the blessed sacrament reading it took almost five hours five hours to read 150 psalms at a stretch sisters and brothers after spending reading this psalm we had a vision of some angels coming to that hall and taking photograph of us we were around 10 of us and we could see in the vision that the angels are taking this photograph up to the heaven and sticking our photograph on the walls of heaven that means before we reach heaven we our prayers have already reached heaven and we are being noticed by god so the moment we enter the gate of heaven peter will say your photo is already on this wall come come in come in sisters and brothers this was a small vision we got just because we did a small sacrifice of praying 150 psalms do we make a prayer that will shake heavens that will make angels to take a photograph and put our photographs on the walls of heaven it happens because god cannot cheat his eyes are sharp isaiah 59 and 1 is my hands are too short to save you see the lord's hand is not too short to save nor his ears too dull to hear human beings can pretend but never god every prayer that you make every scripture that you read every sacrifice that you do every divine mercy that you pray is being recorded in heaven in your name before you reach heaven all these prayers will come back to you as god's favor and god's blessing if the little prayers of nathaniel that he made under the fig tree was noticed by the son of god and he's been taken as the apostle of god how much more he will reward you even today because hebrews 13 8 we should never forget this scripture put inside us jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever that same christ who noticed the prayer of nathaniel yesterday is the same jesus who is noticing the prayer that you make today every prayer that you make has a covenant behind it and he will make a covenant that means we need to pray in such a way that the lord has is making a covenant when lois prayed the lord made a covenant that her grandson will be chosen to be a disciple of god and timothy is chosen when simon the Cyrene carried the cross of jesus his son rufus and alexander was called to serve the lord the history of the church teaches when if we look behind any occasion any call there is someone who made sacrificial prayers the prayers of my parents i know has helped me to become a priest i know it's not my merit it's not my quality my parents tried their level best never to miss daily holy masses they tried definitely they have missed masses but they have tried 
and they forced us to attend daily mass and that sacrifice made jesus to make a covenant with them and that covenant is me a priest today as you listen to me this saint bartholomew is telling us that i prayed under the fig tree i never thought there was two eyes that is watching this prayer i was praying under the fig tree and i never know that there is someone who is noticing it and will tell me openly what i am going through never in my life somebody told me what i was reading and here comes the lord telling my son i have noticed you under the fig tree and i knew you are reading genesis chapter 33 and i could see you you were watching the angels coming and going and you will see greater than this and you will see god himself directly and you will serve him god looks down from heaven on human kind to see if there are any who are wise who seek after god the lord looks down from heaven one day during the retreat we were just talking it was the passage of sakeus so the children were attending the retreat and we asked the children how did jesus knew that sakeus was on the on that tree on the sycamore tree then the children one boy lifted the hand and he said it is so simple because sakeus left his shoes under the tree that's why jesus saw the shoes and looked up and saw sakeus and we told him no jesus never looks from down he looks from above let's repeat this word of god the lord looks down from heaven on human kind to see if there are any who are wise who seek after god again psalm 53 verse 2 we read psalm 53 verse 2 god looks down from heaven on human kind to see if there are any who are wise who seek after god same uh, word of god repeat it twice that means even today as you are listening to the word of god as you are participating in the prayer service he is looking to you it's more than you are seeking god god is seeking you saint augustine was told by saint ambrose augustine is not you who is t- you who is seeking the truth but the truth is seeking you the lord is seeking you more than you are seeking god Again 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 12 we read 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 12 we read for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer sisters and brothers today when Nathaniel when Bartholomew was brought to Jesus Jesus is telling the entire history of Nathaniel saying my son before you come to me I have already seen you from above I am your god now the goodness and the speciality of the character of Jesus is that when philip brought nathaniel told nathaniel introduced jesus to nathaniel saying he is the messiah he is the son of god now nathaniel is making a negative comment he is a brilliant man he is an educated person and he is learned the history and he knows the prophecies and nathaniel is telling can anything good come from nazareth can anything good come from nazareth and he comes with this negative attitude negative approach but jesus is giving such a great positive comment on him saying here comes a man without guile a man who is just sisters and brothers to the same person who made a negative comment the lord is telling him you are a good person you are a just person you are an innocent person you are upright you are a righteous person but what did nathaniel told about jesus i don't think anything good can come out of this nazareth but jesus is telling you are a just man sisters and brothers 
This is the evaluation of God. We have to always look through the eyes of God. And if we go through this passage, we will be surprised how did Jesus is transforming this Nathaniel, telling him, first of all, you are a righteous man, you are a just man, you are a man without hypocrisy, you are a man who is genuine. Now, after making this comment, he was so surprised because it's only Nathaniel who is faithful, then the Lord is telling do you know that before you have come, before you have made this comment, I have seen you under the fig tree. And for a Jewish person, fig tree symbolizes the place where they stay under the fig tree and learn the law, learn the Bible, learn the Pentateuch, the law of Moses. That is the way, that is the place they sit and they pray. And this is what the Lord told him I have seen you, you are praying. I have seen you, you are learning the scriptures. I have seen you, you are looking at the law of the Lord. Then Nathaniel was so much impressed. There is no one who knows. It's early morning. Nobody can see that he is standing under the fig tree learning the law. And the Lord is telling, my son, I have seen you. How earnest you are in seeking God. Then when he called him, you are you are rabbi, you are a master, you are God. Because there is no one who can see me. I have never seen anybody around while I was praying. I was doing this sacrifice of trying to know my God. Then the Lord is telling, my son, have you believed me? Just because I told you, you are praying under the victory, you are reading the scriptures. And I tell you what you are reading. You are reading what? Jacob, the incident of Jacob that he had a vision of the angels coming down the ladder that he had seen in the vision that the angels were climbing up and climbing down. He was so much impressed and he started following Christ. Sisters and brothers, do we believe that the Lord can see everything that we have done in our life? For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. 1 Peter 3, 12. This is the scripture. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Anything good that you have done any time in your life is noticed by the Lord. Stored in his heart. I do remember an incident. This was while I was in the retreat center in Mumbai in our Thabo Divine Retreat Center. During the retreat, there is registration. Anybody who comes to attend the retreat, they have to register their name. But there are certain conditions when you come for the retreat, especially if they are drunkards and they have some kind of uh, manifestations like withdrawal symptoms. We don't have the facility. We have to make sure that somebody accompanies them, that they don't come alone. Somebody is there with them to take care of them in case of some kind of withdrawal symptoms. Then Father, the director, Father told me, Father Matthew told me that you have to be near the registration desk in case there is some complicated issues that some people with the serious medical conditions or some mental uh, problems or uh, extreme drunkenness, you have to speak to them. Maybe if they are alone, you have to send them back and tell them to come with somebody. So I, I was waiting there. If there is some extra means, extraordinary cases, those who are in the registration, they have to recommend them to the priest and we will just pray for them and find whether they will be able to continue in the retreat, means attend the retreat. Then as I was there, somebody came so drunk, he was not on his two legs because he was so much into alcohol because somebody told him once he starts the retreat, he cannot drink. So he drank full and he is coming for the retreat. So those who are in the uh, process, they came to know in this condition he is not able to attend the retreat. So they just recommended, they just sent him to me. And I came to know that he cannot just stand alone, that he is just going to fall. He has extreme withdrawal and I was afraid that if he stays there, he may have some withdrawal symptoms. But you know that drunkards, it's very difficult to speak to them once they are fully drunk. I just asked him that, uh, are you alone? Then he said, uh, I'm alone. Then I told him, if you are alone, we cannot let you attend this retreat because if you have some withdrawal symptoms, there is no one to look after you. So it's difficult for you to attend this retreat because we cannot look after you. 
Then this drunkard is telling, when somebody gets drunk, I have found they get an extra intelligence. Then he is telling me, Father, you don't want to look after me. Then I told him, then who will look after? We need to keep somebody. Then he told me, Father, Jesus will look after me. Then I told, Jesus is looking after you through us. So how can you say Jesus will come and look after you? Then he told me, Father, you don't want to worry. I came to this place seeking Jesus. How can you chase me away? I told him, I'm not chasing you away. We don't have that uh, facilities to look after you. Then how can you attend the retreat? Then he asked me, Father, this retreat center, is it for the people who have no problems, people who are holy, or people like me who are sinners, who are drunkards, who have difficulties or family issues? Are you keeping this retreat center for perfect people? Then, Father, where else I go? Then I was being shocked because he's more intelligent than any of us. And he's telling me, Father, this sender is for people like me. I have a problem. And I have this difficulty. I have this challenge of I want to stop drinking. But then where else I go? It, if it is not to Jesus, then where else I go? Then I told him, your logic is correct. But our problem is, we don't have the facility. Then he told me, Father, you don't worry. God will look after me. Then I told him, I have no problem provided. You have to bring somebody to help you. Maybe a family member, your cousins, your relatives. Is there somebody who came with you? Then he said, Father, there is no one. I am alone. But you don't worry. God will look after me. Then I, I came to know he's not just going in this way. Then anyway, I have to take a decision whether to send him back or to stay there. Then I told him, do you have brought alcohol with you now? Then he told me, he gave me the packet that he brought, the suitcase. I just, the bag, I just opened and I told him, I want to check to make sure that at least you don't continue drinking. Then I checked everywhere and I could not find anything. Then he told me, Father, you can believe me, there is nothing. Then I told him, you know some drunkards, they don't keep in the bag because you know you have information that the priest may check the bags. Can I check your body? Then he said, uh, Father, there is nothing. Then I told him, please let me check. Then when I checked, he had put bottles inside his uh, trousers and all over. Because they told him don't keep in the bag. So he kept there. I told him, in this condition, how can you attend the retreat? I have to remove all these things. Then he said, okay, you take, but I will not go from this place. I have to attend the retreat. Anyway, I have removed all the bottles and I gave to them to destroy it. Then I told him, okay, I can let you attend the retreat, but provided you have to promise me that you will never drink again. You have to promise that you will never drink again. I told him to promise. Then he told me, Father, I can't promise because I started drinking not just now. My father was a drunkard. And my great grandfather was a very big drunkard. Can you go and stop their uh, alcoholism so that I may also change? Then I told him, why you are not changing? It's because you are blaming your problem on your dad and on your grandfather. The Lord wants you to be converted. The Lord wants you to become a new person. He is not asking somebody else to be changed. If a snake bites you, who is to be treated? The snake or you? Don't accuse. Stop accusing anyone. That's the only way you can attend this retreat and get conversion. And he started arguing and I could see so many people waiting on the queue. I came to know that it's very difficult to talk to a drunkard because he will talk and talk and talk and at the end sometimes we may not get any conclusion. Then I just told him, let me just pray for you. Let me see what God is talking to you. Sisters and brothers, when we closed the eyes, when we started to pray, the Lord revealed a word of God. This is Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 60. This is what I could see that the Lord is speaking to him. The Lord is compassionate to him. Let's re repeat this word of God together. 1660. Six zero. Yet yes. I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth. And I will establish with you an everlasting covenant. The Lord is telling him, yet I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth. And I will establish with you 
an everlasting covenant i was so much impressed with the way the lord deals with him that means the lord wanted him to attend the retreat the lord is taking him inside the retreat though he is fully drunk though he carried bottles with him i came to know jesus has no problem with me it's only me as a priest have lot of confusions and problem to take a decision to let him attend the retreat but the lord is telling this is my son i had already made a covenant with this son when he was young and i am the same who made a covenant with him that means before he became a drunkard he he is he was my son and he is my son and i always love him the way he is i always tolerate him then i kept him aside and i asked him what's your background can you just briefly tell me about you then he told me that he he is married he has wife he has three kids he started a business the business collapsed to forget about this stress he started drinking now he could not stop drinking because he has huge debts he is telling to forget all his problems now he started drinking alcohol and now he cannot get out of it as if he is trapped there but i asked him but what is your background is any time you served god then he said he was helping a missionary priest in a remote village where they had lot of problems there was terrorist attacks he went and helped a priest for some 6 7 years and he did his little studies with the priest until the priest got transfer he stayed with the priest but in between while the priest was there the robbers attacked but he was the only one who stayed with the priest and gave him moral support because of that good work he has done when he was young that was before he got married before when he was young he went with a missionary priest he helped in a remote village protecting the priest from robbers and saved him the lord made a covenant with him the lord had never forgotten that act of charity he has done and still the lord remembers him and the lord because he made a covenant with him because of the prayers he has made sisters and brothers with that incident we let him attend the retreat he attended the retreat and he requested can he stay back for another retreat he stayed back for another retreat he said can i become a team member if i go out again i can start this habit of drinking and he stayed there he became a new person he became a powerful instrument in the hand of the lord because of the small charity he has done when he was young the lord's eyes are very sharp he is looking at you he is making a covenant with you remember if the lord has made a covenant with you he will never break it that's why every time that when the prophets pray when moses pray when the when prophet jeremiah pray when these prophets pray they always use a term god of abraham god of isaac god of jacob because our god is the god of the covenant once he has made a covenant with anyone he will never forget it sisters and brothers because this nathaniel he was praying under the fig tree the lord listen to his prayer called him made him his disciple today as we are here we should know there is someone who is praying for us that's why he is making a covenant we read in 2 timothy chapter 1 4 and 5 why paul is calling timothy as his disciple it's because he could see the prayer the sacrifices of the mother and the grandmother 2 Timothy 1:4 recalling your tears i long to see you so that i may be filled with joy then verse 5 we read i am reminded of your sincere faith a faith that lived first in your grandmother lois and your mother unis and now i am sure lives in you remember the faithfulness the covenant the lord made with lois and unis the grandmother and the mother the lord is calling timothy and saint paul did not know about timothy but the lord 
has already commissioned Timothy to be a disciple because of the prayer made by Lois and Eunice. Sisters and brothers, any prayer that you make, any sacrifice that you do, never go unnoticed from the eyes of the Lord. He, once he has made a covenant, is permanent. Isaiah 59, 21, he is telling that, and as for me, together we claim, and as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you, and my words that I have put in your mouth, shall not depart out of your mouth, or out of the mouths of your children, or out of the mouths of your children's children, says the Lord, from now on. And forever. and forever. Sisters and brothers, the spiritual fathers say, this is the only scripture that begins with, thus says the Lord, and ends with, thus says the Lord, because it's a covenant. That means a covenant that the Lord is making with you when you are praying. So no prayer go unanswered. In any part, in anywhere. Because as priests, when we do give some kind of counseling, then the Lord reminds positive things about that person that the, sometime I do remember a lady came and this lady had a habit of getting up at 3 a.m. in the night and praying the divine mercy every day 3 a.m. and she says somebody calls her up and she keeps her hands extended as if Jesus hanging on the cross and she is praying every day at 3 a.m. and the Lord has called her to be an intercessor. Sisters and brothers, any prayer, any prayer that you make, it is being stored in the treasury of heaven and it will come back to you as a great favor of the Lord. So the prayers that Nathaniel made under the fig tree made him to be known and to be appreciated, to be approved by Jesus, the Son of God. So sometimes you may feel discouraged. Sometimes you feel, why do you praise these prayers? Have any answer? Is there anybody who is noticing it? Definitely. When Lois, the grandmother, prayed, that blessing of Lois came upon her daughter, Eunice. And that the prayer of Eunice came upon her son, Timothy. Generations are blessed. So if the Lord, if because the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, what did Jesus call Zacchaeus? This is Luke chapter 19 verse 9. Luke chapter 19 verse 9. When then Jesus said to him, Today, repeat with me, Today, today salvation, salvation has, has come, come to this, this house, house because he too is, is a son, son of Abraham. Abraham. The Lord Jesus is telling Zacchaeus, why I have visited your home? Because I know Abraham. He is a faithful man. He kept the covenant. He prayed. He led a just life. So I am calling, I am visiting you and I give you salvation because of a covenant I made with Abraham. Today as you listen to me, can you make a covenant with God? Can you make a prayer that makes Jesus to make a covenant with you? And your generations will be blessed. When you listen to this word, you may see that you are so old that you are not able to do anything. But you have a powerful weapon of intercession. Can you pray for your grandson so that this grandson may become a Catholic priest? Can you pray? Can you do that investment in the treasury of God through intercession? Praying for priests. We had a catechist retreat. And in this catechist retreat, this was held in our retreat center in Tika. I do still remember, they, we asked these catechists if they have any questions they can ask. And they have put so many questions. It was a retreat. And during the retreat, we also put a session. If they have some questions to be clarified, they can write down those questions. And there were so many questions. And we asked our team members to just to take all the questions and write it down so that we may give them answers. And so many questions were repeated, the same questions, because they have these questions. And one of the questions is that so many of these catechists were so much offended, in a way hurt by 
their priest because the catechists walk under the priest the parish priest so they were complaining that sometimes the priests are not respecting them or paying them enough or doing some kind of injustice or showing some kind of partiality so how can you answer how can you solve this problem this is what these catechists were written in the question so we need to give an answer so while we were praying the lord gave us an answer to inspire these catechists you know the priest whom you work with are hard and you find that sometimes they are partial they are not giving you respect but the lord gave them the answer can you pray so that your children may be holy priests can you start praying that your children may be holy priests who who are impartial who are faithful who are respecting the catechists who will be leading a holy life can you pray and can you set an example so that your children may be called and commissioned by god as the priest whom you imagine whom you expect a priest to be you have a duty let's not just accuse others but we also have a duty to make to pray for our children to be called and commissioned by god most of the time we always think that no let others become priests or somebody else do that no the lord wanted to call you but can you pray sisters and brothers let's not just think that uh, let somebody else do this no when you pray when you give your life to the lord the lord is calling you not just you your generations your generations when nathaniel prayed the lord took notice of that and the lord called him though nathaniel did make negative comments though he was not interested though he was not expecting anything good the lord gave him such good 1 peter 3 from 9 we read 1 peter 3 from 8 onwards let us read do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse but on the contrary repay with a blessing is for this that you are called that you might inherit a blessing sisters and brothers this is the character of jesus even when he was being accused means made negative comments he did not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse but on the contrary he repaid everything with a blessing this is the same we have to do so when we do that we are being commissioned by the lord approved by the lord remember anything that you do he notices because his eyes are 10000 times brighter than the sun there is no good that goes unnoticed from the eyes of the lord every prayer that you make every sacrifice that you make that is why we have powerful saints in the catholic church we have saint teresa of child jesus who just lived until 24 years sisters and brothers while she was alive nobody took notice of her but she used to sit in front of the blessed sacrament and she did sacrifice she used to pray and she used to do great sacrifices for the conversion of sinners it's after her death her noble life was been exposed by the holy god her prayer were unnoticed by humans those time but it was never gone unnoticed by the lord there are certain times you are going through humiliations you may be keep on praying for the conversion of your husband you may be keep on praying and you find no there is no breakthrough but remember these are being noticed by god we read in psalm 56 verse 8 psalm 56 verse 8 the scripture says you have kept count of my tossings put my tears in your bottle are they not in your record repeat with me together you have, you have kept, kept count of my tossings but my tears in your bottle, bottle. for uh, are, are they not, not in, your, in record? your record sisters and brothers every pain every tear and actually put my tears in your bottle we have to know symbolically tears is the sign of intercession every prayer that you do is notice recorded by the lord lamentations 2 from 18 lamentations chapter 2 from 18 we read how we have to pray shedding tears cry aloud to the lord o wall of daughter sion 
Let tears stream down like a torrent day and night. Give yourself no rest, your eyes no respite. Verse 19. How and for what that we have to pray. So arise, cry out in the night at the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Lift your hands to him for the lives of your children who faint for hunger at the head of every street. Sisters and brothers, look behind any occasion. There is a lot of prayer. There is a lot of intercession. There is a lot of sacrifices. And every sacrifice, every prayer, every charity that you do is noticed by the Lord and it will return back to you as his favor, as an occasion, as a fulfillment of God's covenant. The same way if the Lord called Abraham to be a blessing, the Lord is also calling you to be a blessing as you are. Maybe you are old, maybe you are sick. There are many saints who have just spent their whole life in the sick bed. Then why they are still being honored and respected? Because they spent their suffering to give glory to God, to save souls. So today, in whatever situation that you are, maybe you have a difficult family life. You have a husband who never listens to you. You may have a husband who abuses you, who persecutes you. But can you tolerate your husband through prayer, for the prayer for all the husbands who do the same? You, the Lord will make a covenant with you and with this covenant your children can be priests and nuns and consecrated people. Maybe you are a husband and you find your wife is repeatedly unfaithful and disobeying you and giving you hard time but you still hold on to her and you pray for the conversion of your wife and such wives all over the world. God will make a covenant with you. That means you have to make a prayer in such a way God will make a covenant with us. Remember how did and when did God made a covenant with Abraham when he made a prayer by sacrificing Isaac. And that was the day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and he became the father of all nations. Do we have such powerful prayers and sacrifices in our life to do so that God will make a covenant with us? Do you have a habit of praying repeatedly so that God will make a covenant?